Um, thank you very much to the organizers for give me, uh, giving me a chance to present my work here. Um, so, um, Nafsi Kadros is my name, and I'm uh, part of uh, the team in Loughborough University that uh, is doing research on daylight. Uh, Professor John Mardalevich from the School of Civil Engineering um, is my supervisor, as well as Dr. Victoria Haynes from the Loughborough Design School. And uh, also part of the team is another PhD student, Eleonora Brambilia. Um, so, uh, the context of, well, let's see. Um, what I will be uh, discussing today is uh, the present uh, context, um, why I have chosen to use the characterization uncharted territory for my title, um, re the research project aim and objectives, uh, then a bit about my methodology, um, if I have time, I think some uh, first observations from analyzing the initial data, uh, challenges I have uh, faced in my research, and expected outputs. Oh, yeah. So, uh, in 2013, the uh, UK government took a bold step. Um, it specified mandatory daylight standards using climate-based metrics um, instead of the traditionally and widely used daylight factor. Uh, this was done by the UK Education Funding uh, Agency and the Priority Schools Building Programme, uh, which is in charge of managing a four million pound budget um, that is allocated toward building new schools in the UK and refurbishing uh, old schools. Uh, this change requires daylight practitioners to carry out climate-based uh, modeling um, before submitting their designs for approval. and. Um, they are doing that, this instead of doing the simpler calculations for the daylight factor. Um, an initial result of this is um, a lot of uh, heated uh, debates um, over uh, which daylight uh, metrics uh, are perhaps best to use, more appropriate. Um, I will not mention what the new mandatory requirements are because my work um, has to do with a wider question. Uh, the question is, um, do we know, well, do we know enough about um, what uh, uh, the actual daylighting performance is in occupied spaces, um, in schools in particular? And then secondly, do we know enough about occupant accept acceptability of uh, daylight conditions so in order to be able to sit back and evaluate whether the change in um, the metrics uh, we're using in policy are better or not? Um, so the studies um, mentioned, uh, the studies you see over there, um, as well as others, uh, have an answer to the question. The, uh, the answer is no, we do not know enough. And the, um, uh, what we need to find out uh, to do is um, get more data on actual daylighting performance um, of um, occupied uh, classrooms. And then uh, there is need for more studies, daylighting studies, to incorporate uh, the qualitative uh, aspects of uh, what the subjective responses uh, to daylight the user's uh, subjective responses are. Um, now you, I think you begin to understand why I have uh, uh, used uh, the phrase uncharted territory. So the few previous studies done in classrooms um, that combine qual the qualitative and the quantitative aspect had uh, to some obstacles to, uh, that they came across. Um, these are the limitations of uh, measurement instrumentation. Um, although now we are able to record data, it's still data, uh, light data at one point. Uh, so there was a lot of thought going before um, uh, instruments are placed in um, classrooms of what points to choose. Uh, then looking at buildings in general, uh, the building systems management installations that do um, uh, record a lot of uh, uh, data performance and thermal comfort data usually do not record uh, light levels. Uh, then particularly in classrooms, any kind of research uh, in classrooms would be difficult bef because of interfering with ongoing classes, uh, teaching. And then finally, a parameter 
that does uh, justify the uh, uncharted uh, territory is um, the increasing dependence of modern teaching methods to uh, visual display technologies. Um, so, uh, very well, in the past few years, even tablets are used in uh, class during teaching. And the old blackboard has become a whiteboard, which is now a smart board because it is connected to projectors and more than one computer also. Um, this has changed the visual demands in classrooms, and we have no data um, on what these needs are today. Um, so this brings me to my research project and the work we do in LAFPRA. Um, the questions that uh, I'm looking to answer are what are the visual needs of the modern classroom? Are there identifiable behavior patterns in terms of the interaction of users with uh, building design elements, that's blind views and electric light views? Uh, what is the impact of specifying compliance with climate-based uh, metrics? So the aim is to explore the extent to which the UK government directives result in classrooms that um, uh, satisfy the user's needs. And uh, my objectives are to firstly um, uh, quantify actual daylight performance in a classroom while teaching is going on, and um, then to identify behavioral patterns in terms of blind use and electric light use, and assess the impact of using the daylight factor um, to evaluate daylight performance, and then investigate the effects of using climate-based metrics to do the same. So I have four classrooms that um, I am using uh, yep, uh, in two different schools around the Leicestershire area. And it is a mixed method approach that I have taken. On the quantita uh, quantitative side, I'm using high dynamic range imaging. Um, and um, I will discuss this uh, in a bit. So I do this to, uh, to map uh, uh, daylighting performance in the four classrooms. And um, uh, I'm also looking at uh, collecting external uh, data. Um, on the qualitative side, I'm using the grounded theory method, which simply means that um, I have a systematic way of collecting data, and then from this data, I let uh, the theory unfold. Um, so it is systematic because I start with um, in small interviews and walkthroughs uh, of the case studies, and then with um, leads I take from there, I, um, I compose well um, the first uh, teacher surveys, and then through analyzing these, I make the questions for the student questionnaires, and then from uh, to find the reasoning behind patterns I see in the answers of the questionnaires, I conduct uh, focus groups with the students. Um, so the main method I am using is uh, HDR imaging, and um, this allows me to capture photos uh, that contain a much um, wider range of brightness. Um, the, the right software gives me the luminance value uh, over the, um, um, the spot in the scene that is represented by each pixel in the picture. Uh, so what happens is I instantly almost have a multitude of um, uh, data, well, data values for luminance, and then illuminance is easily derived from there. Um, I'm now in the fifth month of capturing uh, HDR photos in these four classrooms, and um, uh, I will go on until the end of the year. On the qualitative side, HDR allows me to also observe... Sorry. Um, these are, yes, the kind of pictures, uh, uh, the luminance maps. Um, and then this method also allows me to observe blind use behavior and electric use behavior, as well as uh, quantify the time they, the students spend in front of screens. Um, now, um, on the challenges that I have faced. Um, there, is, there are extensive ethics requirements because I am taking pictures of minors. Um, and then um, data management is a bit of an issue because each photograph uh, is about 50, 52 megabytes. And then I am monitoring for about eight months from eight to six every day uh, in a 10-minute interval. Um, what else? Uh, sorry. Uh, 
then there is a software interoperability issues. Um, the security of uh, high-cost uh, equipment uh, is also an issue because in high school, high schools are known for vandalism and theft of um, objects. And uh, uh, avoidance of acoustic, well, all kinds of interference with this method placing the setup in the classroom are avoided, but then you have the clicking sound of the camera shutter. So um, a special case used by stills photographers of cinema has been used to enclose the camera and lens. Um, um, then, um, hmm. what else do we have? Ah, creating and maintaining very good communication links with every stakeholder in the school is the most important thing and very time consuming also. Everyone who is part of the school is very important because they give me access and they make uh, my work easier. So administrators and technicians are very um, uh, open doors for the things that I need to do in classes. Um, lastly, uh, there are challenges that are common to mixed uh, method uh, research because um, the researcher has to switch between quantitative and qualitative skills and uh, mindset. Um, I'm in the middle now of collecting uh, data. I don't know if I have time for... Uh, no, I don't. Um, okay. Uh, well, um, I do have a poster outside and I'll invite you to take a look. It's near the entrance. Um, Th uh, these are things that do show up on the poster and explain some early observations. I have not yet started the analysis. And in the end, um, I'll be able to uh, provide evidence. This is what this work is doing, trying to provide evidence um, that will uh, pro give more information of uh, what is um, um, well, the information that is needed of what is going on in actual classrooms in terms of daylight performance and uh, what users actually need. Um, since uh, I'm using um, these four classrooms together with a parallel project of Eleonora Brambilia, also from Lofra, um, we will be able to um, assess the uh, differences between actual and predicted uh, performance in these <laughs> classrooms. Well, thank you very much.